let us understand the harup architecture as earlier we have understood about that sdfs and map reduce has been uh, submitted uh, by google as white paper after that uh, yahoo came and implemented as practical that is applied one for that haru sdfs uh, and the map reduce part technique so these are two things by understanding these two techniques that is sdfs and map reduce we can understand the architecture of whole haru so let us understand uh, first uh, so basically what we are saying that haru can be understood by understanding uh, um, sdfs a technique and map reduce map reduce so after understanding these two things we can easily understand haru so let us start first understanding this sdfs what this sdfs was developed and then implemented okay out of two techniques of harup to understand harup uh, let us we are going to understand uh, the first one that is harup uh, sdfs technique that is sdfs stands for harup distributed file system and what this is about it's just about storing the file how the uh, data will be stored in harup system okay so it's definition is like this it is a special design file system for storing huge data sets with cluster of commodity hardware with streaming the access pattern so what let us understand one by one there is a huge terms are here special design for the understand so it is a special design so we have clear about that it is used sdfs technique is used for storing the data that is big data in harup system but it is special design it is having clustered this commodity hardware and is streaming the access pattern let us understand first what is clustered in this so cluster as we know that cluster is nothing but the number of system in a single lan okay so cluster is nothing but the number of systems in a single lan local area network so we have uh, some nodes which are connecting locally and it becomes a lan okay that's was the cluster in this part now commodity hardware commodity commodity hardware what is this commodity hardware we by um, we are understanding this so commodity hardware is nothing but hardware which are cheap but arranged in such a way so that it can be reliable so it's called commodity hardware so in haru we are storing huge data and if it has been used uh, for storing those type of this uh, big data if we are using a very high and very expensive hard disk to store those data then the service provider who will provide the uh, uh, harup uh, sdfs uh, system the whole harup system will have to be using uh, would have to be using uh, lots of uh, expensive hardware but what uh, but it will make a very expensive service for the company who will want to store those data in the harup system so do you want to store some simple uh, normal data or uh, suppose you are storing 30 gb data you are paying lots of money for that so it will not be our um, uh, so why we will store instead of that we will we can use our own hard disk for storing them if it is so expensive so what is done in haru that those system uh, in which uh, we are storing the data are commodity hardware that is cheap level hardware but arranged in, in such a way that hardware failure or anything else will not cause your data loss always your data will be safe and secured okay so that's why it is cheap but reliable so that was that is the meaning of commodity hardware the third one is streaming the access pattern 
So, what is the streaming the excess pattern? Streaming the excess pattern. Streaming the excess pattern is nothing but you write once and read as many times as you want but don't change the content of the file. This is the meaning of streaming the excess pattern. Okay, now let us understand what is the meaning of a special designed. So, SDFS is a very special designed file storing system. Why? Because in this storing file system, each block is of, by default, each block is of 64 MB. Okay, each block is of size 64 MB by default, which can be changed to 128 MB if admin of the Hadoop wants okay so up to uh, up to, if you don't if you are you want to store the more and you have the more huge data you can also use the 60 uh, 128 mb block size in case of sdfs for file storing file but by default we use 64 mb okay now 64 mb block size is very uh, special designed why for understanding this, we need to understand that uh, in our local uh, normal hard disk we use, in that when let us understand the 4KB is the size of the block. Okay, 4KB is the size of the block. Now we are storing a data suppose of 3KB in this block. So what the remaining data will be? What here 3KB has been used and this one is remaining is 1KB. So 3KB has been used, but that 1KB can also be used. But what it is done that it is rem uh, kept uh, useless why because if you want to store another data coming in this from by starting from this rest of the block then it makes complicate in our normal hard disk we use but for that sake of convenience what it has been done that that remaining 1kb are not used okay so it is so if you are using a single block and if the size of the data you are storing in that block is less than the size of the block then remaining rest of the block uh, memory is becoming useless. That's why in case of Haroop, in a single in a single block, what it is done that if the single block is here 60 divided by 64 MB, and if you suppose have used your 60 MB of data by this, then rest of the 4 MB is not going to be useless. Okay. What it is done in it is arranged in a such a way that that 4 MB is not going to be useless. The next data which is coming can be stored starting from this, this remaining 4 MB. Okay, so that makes uh, SDFS special designed. Okay, now let us understand why 64 MB block size as a default has been chosen. Okay. Why not something else? Why not 4 KB? Why not 10 KB? Why not 16 KB? So the first of all the data we are storing is very huge. So for storing that amount of huge data, if you will, if you want to store petabytes of data and you are storing in a block of 4 KB, 8 KB, 10 KB, 100 KB. So your uh, number of division of your data, huge data, which is petabytes, terabytes is coming is very, very high number of data. Uh, uh, partition for storing in 4 KB or 100 KB block will be very high. So for decreasing that number of uh, division, the num size of the block has been increased. Okay, that was the that is the first reason. Second reason is that whenever you store some data in somewhere, suppose you are storing in your laptop in your hard disk uh, some data. So there has to be some location, and that location has to be somewhere. Uh, stored so that whenever the data you need will be uh, that uh, map data will be called and that data uh, which where actual the data is existing can be um, taken from that location so it is not always that everything has been remembered what is the suppose uh, your song is there suppose one mp3 file is there mp3 file is there now it has been stored in a hard disk but somewhere this for this, suppose this location is 1000. So that location, that song.mp3 is stored in location 1000 will be 
uh, stored somewhere so that whenever you will require this will be approached first and by approaching this this will go to this actual existence of the data and from there it will be fetched on in RAM okay so this is called what that it is the data about data this is your actual data and we are storing it is like address it is like home and it is like address so by and uh, by an, uh, analyzing the address you can reach to your home so this is your address this is your home so your address is what your address is data about data that is to know that to get the actual data you need some information so that you can reach to your destiny your date uh, to your uh, home to your actual existence of data so that data which makes you to reach to your actual existence of the data is called metadata why it date that is data about data is your metadata so this information which is you uh, kept here that where this file is stored that is at, uh, in location 1000 is your metadata now suppose you are storing huge data you are storing huge data okay you are storing some petabytes or uh, terabytes of data okay now you want to divide it so number of size uh, of the each uh, um, partition will be very huge if you are uh, using the block of 4 kb or block of 100 kb like this so in kb the number of suppose it is 5 kb the number of blocks will be huge in number so number of as many number of blocks will be there that many number of metadata we will be required because each block metadata we need why we need because during the uh, our requirement we will approach to the metadata to that please metadata give me the data where it this data has been stored so first metadata will be approached then the actual data will be uh, fetched from the hard disk to uh, in mem main memory okay so what is uh, done that huge metadata will be also be required uh, huge space will also be required to store that many of um, that many num metadata so again 5 tb you are storing and suppose for 5 tb your metadata is becoming your one uh, 0.5 0.5 tb of metadata you are creating so is it feasible no we are storing huge data and about data about data we are storing again in somewhere in very huge place so it is not a feasible solution so what we do that we make the block size we make the block size in MB and for default in case of SDFS it is used 64 MB so by using this 64 MB what we reduce we do reduce the number of blocks will be required for the storing this much amount of data so number of blocks has been decreased that means we have also decreased the number of metadata we are storing somewhere so suppose instead of 0.5 TB of metadata now we have my, our metadata becoming 1 MB okay so 1 MB is better or 0.5 terabyte is better so 1 MB is of course better so it is very less space that's why 64 MB of block size has been used that's the first reason uh, second reason as we go now up to this that's fine so we have understood that uh, why 64 MB of block by default has been used and not other else. Now as we have understood that did, what is data center earlier. So let us uh, pictureize a structure of a SDFS file system. Okay. So suppose this is our uh, this one is our data center. As we know, which size is very huge, so huge one is I'm creating here. Okay, a data center what contains? It contains cluster, and cluster is nothing but the set of machines in a single line. So it contains lots of clusters. So this one is suppose a single cluster. Another, mm, let us make three. instead of two so two this one is our first cluster this one is our second cluster this one is our third cluster so cluster one cluster two cluster n similarly lots of cluster will be there 
ओके सो दिस वॉल इज आवर डेटा सेंटर एंड फ्रॉम वन टू एंड फ्रॉम दिस ओरिजेंटल एज वेल एज वर्टिकल इज सोइंग योर क्लस्टर्स सो इच वन इज योर क्लस्टर वन क्लस्टर टू क्लस्टर थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स अप टू एंड क्लस्टर वन क्लस्टर टू क्लस्टर थ्री क्लस्टर अप टू क्लस्टर एंड लाइक दिस सो ह्यूज नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स आर देयर एंड इट कंटेंस व्हाट इट कंटेंस नथिंग बट द नंबर ऑफ सिस्टम्स इन अ सिंगल लाइन ओके सो लेट अस ड्रॉ दैट आल्सो सो सपोज दिस वन इज योर डेटा नोड वन ईच नोड इन अ क्लस्टर is known as data node why because it stores data so that data is storing node is your data node okay so this is your data node 1 data node 2 data node 3 data node 4 and in this way lots of data nodes will be there will be there in a single cluster so this is your structure of uh, where the data is stored in sdfs and how the it is its architecture okay now we need to understand the how this architecture has been uh, uh, utilized for accessing the data for that we will need to understand uh, we need to understand the master slave architecture of sdfs sdfs so let us understand that master slave architecture of sdfs master slave architecture of sdfs so in a data center there are huge number of cluster present each cluster is having four components in it and each uh, as a master slave architecture so each cluster is having four components in it as master slave architecture and those four components are name node job tracker task tracker and data nodes out of these four components of a single cluster these two of them these two of them are master and these two are slave now task tracker is slave of job tracker and name node is slave of as or and data node is slave of name node now in case of master slave architecture master can talk to master and slave can talk to slave again a master can talk to its own slave and a slave can talk to its own master but a master cannot talk to slave of other master okay this is the uh, master slave architecture of haroop system which is having single cluster is having four components as master slave architecture where, where name node gen, uh, and job tracker works as master a uh, master and task tracker and data nodes work as uh, slave okay there are four components we will be using in sdfs for uh, storing and accessing the data and that four components we have already discussed uh, as a summary now we will go through each one by one now first one is your name node let us understand it first so name node is nothing but a system of course a system now it is a high reliable system hence very really costly that is 1 tb of about cost 10 20 lakh exist in one in number per cluster so there is a lots of cluster for a single cluster there are lots of data nodes available now this cluster will be having only one name node one name node which is a very high reliable system high reliable why because it very expensive very expensive components has been used in this name node system for single cluster only one will be there name node will be there now why it is in uh, used okay it is used 
for storing the data about data that is metadata we have already understood understood that we store the data in data nodes and what type of data in which data node and in which block what data has been stored all this information will be kept in name node suppose there is a client who stored the data suppose there is a client who stores the data now there is huge data now that data will be of number of files different different um, files will can be stored in a different different cluster can be stored in a single cluster and in a single can be stored in a different different data nodes so all this information that in which cluster of which client and in, in which node in which block where the data will be stored this all information will be stored in data as a data uh, as a metadata in name node now clients information also will be stored in name node that it so that it can understand that client one wants data client wants data client wants data is stored in cluster number this in data node this 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 okay so this information will also be stored in name node and client name client's user id these all things so that it can understand that when it will be uh, accessing those data it's on data then it can un system name node can understand easily that it's client that and its data is there and they can access from there so this data will be stored in name node now why it is used then fine now heartbeat what is heartbeat in this case a heartbeat is nothing but a simple uh, process which is nothing but a process of 3 second in each and every 3 second data node communicates with this name node we have already discussed that name node is your slave and it's so sorry, sorry name node is the master node and data node is the slave of that name node so this one is the slave node now between these two communication is established always in after every 3 second is known as heartbeat and what in heartbeat it is goes the information about the hardware of data nodes whether it is working properly or not first second that what changes has been done in data node suppose some file has been changed that information must have to be provided to name node so that it can understand later that what type of file is existing there so basically these two things has been communicated in every 3 second to name node so that hardware condition and about the data every 3 second the data will mm, metadata will be saved to the or updated to the name node okay that's why heartbeat is used now uh, let us understand what it does what is the name node working the we have understood that it stores the metadata now what it does when client comes to this uh, to store the data when client sends some data to store uh, data in uh, cluster it uh, gives them uh, provide uh, client provides the information about themselves and that information will be stored in name node first now it is the name node who knows that in which cluster in which data node the space is remain uh, empty for storing the file uh, uh, data okay so client will give its data and now its duty of name node to provide that data the particular destination where it will be stored so that's the work of name node okay now single point failure name node is called single point failure why and what is this name node is called single point failure because failure of name node is failure of whole haru and how we can understand easily name node stores the all information about data that where it is stored and of whose client which data in which cluster in which data node in which block what type of file has been stored this all information has been stored in this name node now if we don't know the name node then how can we access those data of that particular client so it is not possible so failure of this name node means failure of everything that is failure haru it is like you have home but you forgot your address of the home so if you don't know the address of your home how you will reach your the, uh, the, to your home it's a simple thing so you don't have that means you your it's like your world has been lost oh my god i don't have my home so that's the failure of name node is the failure of haru that's why name node is called single point failure 
okay now for single point failure uh, reason and another thing another component is also been used it is not compulsory but uh, there is may be used may not be used a secondary name node also been used which also been is it is nothing but the uh, copy of the name primary name name node uh, totally and is also getting updated in every some particular amount of time uh, from the name node so it's nothing but a backup like this so secondary name node is up to this it is nothing more okay now we will understand the um, another components okay let us understand the secondary com sec second component that is data node now data node is what data node is a number of nodes in a single cluster so in a single cluster we have already seen there is lots of data nodes which are nothing but the commodity hardware why commodity hardware we, we have already, already discussed uh, we have honest already discussed that commodity hardware is used so that it uh, hadoop system service can be uh, made very cheap okay but cheap is okay but how it is reliable it is a question now data data nodes are commodity hardware system which having lots of hard disk space 500 gb or 1 tb or some finite number of tbs so this is of containing hard disk lots of hard disk and which data actual data will be stored and in every 3 second as we have already discussed in case of name node this gives uh, a process called heartbeat by which uh, it sends the information about this hardware and it changes in this file system actually changes in is not pass uh, not done but whenever something is replaced something is done that can also uh, so be sent through heartbeat to name node so this is the main work of this data node so in a single cluster lots of data nodes are provided which is nothing but a uh, huge hard containing huge hard disk to store the actual data now replication as we have understood it is commodity hardware means cheap level hardware but reliable why hadoop is providing reliable and still it is having storing the data in commodity hardware hard disk okay so it is done by giving the uh, keeping the backups so suppose one data is stored in this data node 1 so it's by default its copy will be in three nodes in this node in this node also and that information will also be stored in name name node that this data node copy has been stored in the this data node 2 this data node 3 okay so suppose this data node has been failed so this data has been lost but its copy is present in this node also and this node also so it is reliable by making the backup so every time at a particular time every time a single data will having of three copy in three different data nodes so this suppose this data node has been failed so this second uh, third another node will be also used and as a primary data node and the rest of the two rest of the two will be used as a copy of the data for backup fine so this is about data nodes so let us understand the next component. let us understand the third component is job tracker job tracker it is a high reliable system hence very costly one terabyte is about 10 or 20 lakhs exist one in number per cluster again the same case these are data nodes of a single cluster this is your job tracker what it does is whenever a client queries some suppose client has stored the data in sdfs client will query something so that query will come to first to this job tracker job tracker will take the query query and it will find some slaves and which slaves is task trackers which will be will discussing later in after this uh, two different task tracker which which will exe uh, execute those queries 
Suppose these are task tracker 1, task tracker 2, task tracker 3. So this job tracker will take the query of the client. Query of the client 1 will be come first to the job tracker. Then it will, depending on the data far, uh, data, data distance from this uh, task trackers, it will find the best task tracker and it will assign them the job dividing the uh, query and it will assign different job to different task tracker which will go to the particular data and it will process it, execute it and it will give the output. Okay, so querying the data, querying from the client will come to the job tracker, it will go to the task tracker, it will come to the data nodes and it will be executed and then it will be returned back to the. Now, in mid, in between that, job tracker's work is to monitor. Okay, so what is that is fine. Okay, now how this job tracker will understand that the query which a client is sending is for which data so it will talk to the name node it will talk to the name node which will having the all information that what which client what data is where stored so it will talk to the so master can talk to the master we have already discussed so master will master jobs tracker will talk to the master name node it will give the information about the data then it will go to process uh, assign the task to job tra uh, task tracker to process them now that's fine. Now in mid it monitors also. In it monitors the data. It monitors the uh, job assigned to task tracker that how much job has been finished. Suppose 20%, 30% job, 60% job has been finished. How it will be understood by the client? So client can at a time can at any, at any time can understand that what a percentage of the query has already been completed. So job tracker monitors the process done by this task tracker that how much day, um, work has been completed. So it monitors and of course job trackers uh, is just, uh, uh, your master and task tracker is your uh, slave which will be understand, will be discussing later task tracker what is it what it is. So this task tracker will give the info, uh, will be monitored by this job tracker and job tracker hence will send the information that that much percent of the work has been completed. So at every time client will be uh, within touch that how much job has been done. Okay, so this is the main. and there is it is also a single point failure. Job tracker is single point failure. Why? It is single point failure because if we lost a job tracker, then query which has came here will also be lost and no job will be served. So failure of the job tracker means failure of the whole query, failure of the whole data will not be go gone anywhere because name not is has not been failed. But failure of task tracker means failure of the process. Okay, because let us understand the fourth component that is task tracker. Okay, so task tracker are commodity hardware system exist many number per cluster. As data nodes are many in number in a single cluster, similarly task trackers are also many in number in for a single cluster. So these are this is also this is slave of slave of job tracker. So suppose this is our cluster having lots of data nodes. Okay, now this cluster will be having lots of task trackers okay at a time at a single at a time one task tracker will be working for a single data nodes okay so what the job of task tracker job of task tracker is assigned by job tracker which we have already discussed job trackers gives the task to task tracker and what does task tracker? Task tracker starts two process, uh, um, which we'll be discussing later. So it takes the task from job tracker and it works on the data on which job tracker has uh, assigned to work on. And on that data node, the task tracker, suppose this data node is will work with TT1, task tracker 1. This data node will work TT2. So that data which will, will be uh, uh, store which is, which has been stored in data node one and need to be processed. So that will be uh, that on that data node, data node that on that data 
task tracker one will work and will send the information to the job tracker after each three second so that job tracker can um, uh, update itself and update the data to the client how much work has been progressed okay so okay now our heartbeat is where again it uses heartbeat means updating the job tracker that how much data has been processed uh, that is task tracker gives in every three second updates the job tracker about the job which is doing now each, ta each, each task tracker will work on uh, single data node okay so a task tracker may can work for different different clients also so two clients have been assigned for doing some job so it is actually like separate instance has been formed each instance of the task tracker works on separate jvm uh, java virtual machine and works it so that it can independently work okay so we'll understand it later now each task tracker has been uh, confined uh, with uh, different different uh, set of slots and each slot denotes that how much uh, sorry number of slots of a task tracker denotes that how many number of tasks a task track or task tracker can do okay so lots of tasks uh, uh, works will be coming on a single task tracker so, so uh, what task one task two task three and it will handle by this task tracker depending on the how much number of uh, set of slots has been uh, uh, inside uh, then in this task tracker okay so task tracker job is get the job and process it and get back it to the job tracker okay fine now again failure we have not discussed the failure of task what it means failure of task tracker what is effects so suppose this task tracker, task tracker has been failed that means data node no one it was working so data of this data node was also present in another net suppose that data node is this this copy of this data was here so Anit, suppose T2 was working here, so that job will be assigned to this T2, okay? Not that this will be, uh, suppose this mm, is failed. So that task tracker, that is T2, will be assigned the whole job to work on the same data, okay? Now suppose that it is not failed totally as a hardware, but stuck, that is it is hanged. Now when it is get hanged, it is uh, giving the not uh, response Suppose in after 30 second, 10 heartbeats has been done, but no response has been given to the job tracker. So what job will job tracker will understand that this either this data node uh, sorry task tracker has been failed or something. Else. So what it will do? It will assign the job to the another task tracker to do the same job on the same data which is copied in some other data node. So this will be failure. Failure means again now in store there are lots of task tracker again existing. That task tracker will be assigned to this data node so that in future it will be utilizing again. So that's the work of task tracker.